So this week's all been all about self-love. And I shared in one of the classes earlier this week, sometimes you teach what you need to learn. <laughs> Usually I'm pretty good at self-love, but every once in a while, something pops up. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's not good. Okay. So anyway. Let's start by noticing where we have landed today on our mat, in our lives. Notice any thoughts that are going through your mind. Any thoughts about anything that doesn't serve you during our practice today. So one practice that we have is to Acknowledge what comes up. Maybe it's discomfort in the mind. Discomfort in the body. And to not push it away. It turns out that pushing things away and ignoring it doesn't help us at all. <laughs> but rather to sit with it to breathe through it and to know that it will pass at its own time when it's ready. So as we go through our practice today, notice if any thoughts come up that are not kind, are not self-loving, are not helpful for you on your journey. Not ignoring them, we're not pushing them away. We're gonna notice what we feel, how it makes us feel in the body. And then sit with that feeling and breathe through it. So taking deep inhales and long, slow exhales. We don't engage with it. We don't judge it. We just kind of lean into it a little bit. And it will pass. So notice if anything has come up for you here this morning, or if there's something that has been going through your mind this week. Maybe you notice a sensation in your body that is slightly uncomfortable, a headache beginning, an old injury acting up. Maybe you can breathe through that as practice. So we take what we learn on our mats and bring it into our lives. Maybe you slow down your breath just a little bit. Soften your body. 
especially your jaw, your forehead, shoulders and hips. And allow yourself to sink down into the earth. Sometimes it takes a while to breathe through things in order for them to shift, or move, change. And that's okay. So I, I randomly pulled a card from one of the decks that I, I have here. And the mantra that came up is, every experience in my life helps me to grow. Every experience in my life helps me to grow. You know what that, sorry. You decide what that means to you. So let's take a few more rounds of breath here. And then making some small movements in your fingers and toes. Rolling around wrists and ankles. Perhaps you take a big stretch. And then whenever you're ready, hugging your knees in towards your chest. Find movement here that feels right for you. Okay, and then rolling over to one side, whichever side is calling for you. And then making your way up to seated. Okay, so any comfortable seated position for you. And we're gonna find just some seated cat cow here to begin. So hands come to your legs, uh, thighs or knee. Whenever you're ready, round your spine, tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone. And then move in the opposite direction. Shoulders roll back and down the spine. Imagine there's a string pulling the heart up towards the sky. Just continue moving here at your own pace. Notice where it feels good to inhale and where it feels best to exhale. Take your time. All right, let's come back to center and then find some movement in your upper body. Maybe it's circle movements, maybe it's figure eight movements. What feels good for you here? 
So sometimes we do this in table and now we're gonna do it seated. All right, slowly coming back to center. And then we're going to find some moving twists. So bringing the hands out towards the sides, palms face up towards the sky. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, turn to one side, hands come down to the earth. On your inhale, coming back to center. And on your exhale, turning to the other side. And just continue moving here at your own pace with your own breath. All right, so let's go one more time in the opposite direction or whatever direction you still need to go in. <laughs> you know what I mean. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, arms come down by your side. All right, tabletop pose. So as always, if you need to, feel free to bring a blanket underneath your knees to protect your knees or provide a little bit of extra cushioning. In our tabletop, we grip our fingers into the earth, kind of cup our hands here. And let's find some C shapes here. So we're going to look over the left. Um, shoulder and then allow the hips to pop out towards the left side. You'll find a stretch here along the right side body. On your inhale, coming back to center, and on your exhale, making a C shape in the opposite direction. Again, just moving with your breath. One more time in each direction. All right, let's make our way into back to our tabletop and then a child's pose. So any variation that feels good for you, maybe it's knees together, knees apart, maybe arms are long or by your sides. And if your head doesn't make it all the way to the earth, maybe grabbing a block or stacked fist to come underneath the forehead. Finding your breath. Taking deep inhales. Long, slow exhales. Every experience in my life helps me to grow. We're gonna find a side body stretch in our child's pose. So if you can, arms come out long, <clears throat> excuse me, and then walking your arms over towards the right side of your mat. Perhaps that left hand reaches away a little further, melting the left side body down towards the earth. Allowing your hands to walk through center and over to the other side. Perhaps that right hand reaches away a little further, melting the right side body down towards the earth. Let's make our way back to center into tabletop, we're gonna give our knees a bit of a break. Come into seated. 
So our seated pose, we're gonna start with our feet about mat distance apart. All right, number 35, which was a popular one today, deer pose to joy pose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by windshield wipering the knees from side to side. Everybody wants to be 35 again, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so one more time in each direction. All right, and then we're gonna uh, place our legs in a certain manner. So let's bring the right uh, leg so that it's same as the short edge of the mat, the front of your mat. And then the last leg, you're gonna hug it in, activate that foot, feel free to lean over and then send that leg beside you. So you may not be sitting completely on the earth, totally okay. So this is our, our shape for our deer pose. We'll start by going forward. So inhale to lengthen your spine. And exhale, folding forward, hinging from the hips. See if you can keep a tall spine. Soften the hips down. Notice where you feel it in your body. And breathe through it. One more round of breath here. Slowly making your way back up using your hands. Okay, we're gonna bring the right hands down towards the right side and out a little bit towards the side. So two options here. One option if you are worried about your knees is you can keep the knees down and reach the left arm up and over. If it's in your body, maybe you come to joy pose. So putting the weight into your right hand, push your hips up towards the sky, coming up onto your knees, that left arm reaches up or back behind you. And exhale, coming back down. Activate that left foot as you bring it out. Maybe you lean over towards the right hip to do so. And then we'll switch over to the other side, left shin comes forward, activate the right foot to bring that back. So that's to protect our knee just in case we happen to move the leg in a funny position. All right, so let's start here from center. Inhale to lengthen your spine and exhale, hinging forward from the hips. Breathe through whatever's there. Slowly allowing your hands to come back up, walking yourself up. Again, option here, left hand to the floor, maybe the right hand reaches up and over. Perhaps you push into that left hand, the right arm comes up towards the sky, maybe behind you. Joy pose. And exhale, coming back down. Activate the right foot as you take that foot out from underneath. And then slowly make your way back into your tabletop pose. 
number 27, Balancing Cat. Heather, I'm going to take 27 out of this pack. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so Balancing Cat, we're in table. We draw the navel in, also known as Balancing Table. Draw the navel in. We want to push away from the earth so we're not collapsing in on the shoulders. Okay, so push it into your hands. And then allowing the right hand to come forward, sorry, right arm comes forward by the right ear. Roll that shoulder back and down your spine to plug it into place. Get the navel drawn in. And then extending the left leg long behind you, activate the left foot. Notice if you start to collapse in on the left arm, push, push up, <laughs> find your balance. All right, our balancing cat. We're going to experiment if you want to experiment a little bit. Maybe you send the left leg out towards the side and then bring that right arm into kind of like a cactus shape. I'll show you from the other side. Bring it into like a cactus shape. Pull the elbow towards you, towards your back. And then reach back out long into your balancing cat. left leg to the side, pulling the right arm in like a cactus arm, squeeze that shoulder blade. We'll do a couple more here. I'll go back to the right side. You can stay in your balance and cat if that's where you need to be today. You can always just have one arm or the leg up. All right, so let's do one more. And coming back to our tabletop pose. Other side, left arm comes long, rolling the shoulder back and down the spine. Draw the navel in, push away from the earth, allowing the right leg to come long. Helps to activate that foot. Find your balance, find your breath. Breathe through this pose. And if you wish, finding that movement that we did on this side, right leg to the side, left arm comes back, squeeze that shoulder blade. And then make your way back to center. Moving at your own pace. So if it starts to feel just a little bit uncomfortable, see if you can breathe through it. Two more rounds of breath. It's not sharp shooting pain. We don't want that. If we have that, we come right out. No burning. Might be muscle burning, but that's different. <laughs> muscle activated. Okay, one more. And then coming back to our tabletop. Let's find some cat-cow here, round the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. And then moving in the opposite direction. Heart shines through. Find a couple more rounds here. All right, coming back to tabletop. Let's shift the weight forward slightly, tuck the elbows in by your sides, and then gently lower to the earth. We'll find a cobra, baby cobra, hands to the earth, shoulders roll back and down, tuck the elbows, tops of the feet push down, lift the heart. Looking down at the earth. And then maybe in your baby cobra, you lift your hands up off the earth. So our cobra, our snakes, don't have any hands. They use the strength of their back to lift their heads to look. I'm a round of breath here. And then exhale to lower. If at any point you need to take a break, you feel something in the low back as we go through our practice, stop and bend your knees, windshield wiper your feet. Or if we're on our backs, windshield wiper your knees. Okay, we're gonna come into a sphinx pose. 
promise we're going somewhere with all this. So forearms to the earth, elbows are underneath the shoulders. Tops of the feet push down towards the earth. Push yourself away from the earth. So push into your arms so you're not collapsing in. Shoulders roll back and down the spine. And perhaps you imagine pulling your arms in closer towards your chest to send the chest through. And a couple rounds of breath here. And then notice if it feels like you're collapsing in on those arms, push the arms into the earth to push away. Exhale to come down, bend the knees, windshield wiper the feet. All right, so we're gonna come into a tabletop. Number 46, dolphin. So in our dolphin pose, we find our sphinx arms, forearms to the earth, elbows underneath the shoulders. Shoulders roll back and down the spine. All right, so same thing as before, we wanna push our arms in. So I, we're going to activate the muscles in our back when we come up by doing this instead of like hanging out in the, in the joints of the shoulders. Okay. So it depends on your body. Maybe you're going to look down if your head happens to touch the floor. So you're going to look down between your arms or perhaps you look back towards your toes. So from here, curling the toes under, roll your shoulders back and down. And then send the hips up and back behind you like you would in a downward dog. So where does it feel comfortable to look? If the top of your head's coming down towards the earth or onto the earth, sorry, look between the arms, push into the arms. And then depending on your body, perhaps you walk your feet in just a little bit, maybe a lot. <laughs> maybe you keep a little bit of a bend here in your knees, whatever you need. Push into your arms, draw the navel in. One more round of breath. And then slowly lower the knees. Let's come into a puppy pose or melting heart. So hips stay over top of the knees, walk the arms out in front of you, melt the heart down towards the earth. If your forehead doesn't come all, to, all the way to the earth, grabbing something to place underneath the forehead. Every experience in my life helps me to grow. All right, let's take two more rounds of breath. And then making your way back to your tabletop pose. Another card for these three poses. I am forgiving and my compassion replaces anger with love. All right, we're going to make our way into a low lunge just to find a little bit of a stretch here. So right foot comes forward in between the hands. If you have blocks, grab a hold of your blocks. We're going to make find a little bit of movement here. Um, blocks if you want. So to bring the earth up closer towards you. So first, let's just sink here a little bit, making sure that right knee is over the ankle in line with the second or third toe. Maybe you walk that right leg, nope, left leg back a little bit. So feel a little more stretch in the front of the left thigh. Hands can be on the earth, on your blocks, Whoop, maybe even on your thigh or up towards the sky. Up towards the sky gives us the deeper stretch into that front thigh and up into the psoas muscle that runs kind of uh, up over that front hip. Over or behind? Anyway, <laughs> okay. 
I exhale, hands come down to blocks or the earth. And then we're gonna walk our blocks back or hands back, extend the front leg long, activate that front foot. If you wish to feel a little more, inhale, lengthen your spine and exhale to fold forward. Two more rounds of breath. Walking your hands forward after you have found those rounds of breath. Sorry, kind of rushing. Find your lunge. Okay, we're gonna find that all on the other side. So making your way into tabletop and then left foot comes forward. Find your low lunge here. Where does it feel the best to place your hand? And breathe into it. Slowly walking your hands and or blocks back. Extend that left leg long, activate the foot. Perhaps you lengthen the spine and fold. Walking your hands forward. Find a little bit more in that lunge. And then coming into our tabletop pose. Okay. So number 32 is fallen triangle. All right, so a fallen triangle can be, uh, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of a tricky pose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I will walk you through it. And if you decide you want to take a break for this pose, feel free to come into any pose that your body is asking for. Um, all right, fallen triangle, ready? We're gonna come from tabletop into downward dog. Shoulders roll back and down the spine. Right foot reaches up towards the sky. Three-legged dog, find a couple rounds of breath here. And then shift your weight forward, draw the knee in towards you and then over towards that left elbow. Extend the right leg long, so pinky toe edge comes of the foot comes to the floor. Your foot might be closer to the whoop, left foot, might be out to the side. Great. <laughs> Weight goes into your right hand. You're going to turn on your back foot so that you come up, left hand up towards the sky. Maybe you reach up and back. We got a few fallen triangles. All right, let's bring that left hand back down to the earth. Come back into tabletop. Let's take a break in child's pose. And making your way back into your tabletop, let's find fallen triangle on the other side. Downward dog, notice your shoulders, roll them back and down. 
Left foot reaches up towards the sky. Find three-legged dog. Shifting your weight forward into plank, draw the knee in and then over towards the right elbow. Step that left foot out, come onto the pinky toe edge, pivot on the back foot. Weight comes into the left hand. Ooh, right hand reaches high. Losing my mic. I can't come all the way over because I have a wall. <laughs> We have a few fallen triangles and a few variations, which is awesome. Yay! Okay, let's make our way back into our tabletop and into child's pose. All right, that should be the only one that is, uh, might be a bit tricky. All right, let's come into tabletop. Right foot comes forward. Left foot follows, forward fold. Release any tension you feel in your upper body. Keep as much of a bend in your knees so there's no discomfort in your low back, back to the thigh. Maybe you sway. I am forgiving and my compassion replaces anger with love. On your inhale, let's come into a halfway lift. Hands to shins or thighs, flat back. Find equal weight in the four corners of your feet. So you might be tipping forward a little bit. Crown of your head reaches forward, draw the navel in. And exhale, forward fold. All right, let's take a big step back here with the right foot. So either warrior one or high lunge. For warrior one, foot comes down to the earth, toes, sorry, right foot, toes point up towards top right corner of the mat. Let's all bring our arms up towards the sky. Pull the left hip back, right hip forward, shoulders relax. All right, I'm making you work a little bit. Warrior three, arms come back behind you. That's the number, I'll tell you the number in a second. <laughs> Arms come back behind you, shift into your left foot, right foot comes up behind you. See if you can square your hips towards the earth. So imagine that inner thigh rolls up towards the sky. The inner thigh, sorry, of the right leg. Toes point down towards the earth. Warrior three is number seven. Take a big step back into your warrior one or high lunge. I forget what class it was. Earlier this week, I fell. Yoga teacher down. <laughs> All right, ready? We're gonna come up to standing. We're gonna try not to bring the right foot to the earth. So shift your weight forward, maybe send the arms back, come up onto that right leg. Send the, no, oh, left leg, sorry, send the right leg forward. Sorry. <laughs> Dancer pose, activate the right foot. Let's send that right foot back. The right knee points down towards the earth. Right hand comes to, if you can, the in, inner arch of that right foot. If not, just find somewhere and pull. Knee keeps pointing down towards the earth. We keep the right foot active. Left arm reaches up, shoulder rolls back and down. Maybe this is enough of a stretch for you. Perhaps you start to send that right foot up and back behind you. Keep the knee pointing down. Number 23, dancer. Isn't it amazing how some days we have great balance and other days it's terrible. 
<laughs> compassion though, right? All right, let's bring that right knee forward. Once again, release the foot, knee comes forward. Take a big step back with the right foot, high lunge or warrior one. Let's windmill the hands down towards the earth. Uh, drop the right knee, come into tabletop and into child's pose. And we still have another side. <laughs> All right, make your way into a tabletop. This time, left foot steps forward between the hands. Right foot follows into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Left foot takes a big step back. Warrior one or high lunge. Arms reach high. Right hip rolls back, left hip rolls forward. Check that the front knee is over the ankle in line with the second or third toe. So whether you're in high lunge or warrior one, we wanna make sure our legs are in a wide stance, right foot to the right side, left foot to the left. Helps with balance. All right, let's find our warrior three. Arms come back behind us, shift forward. Left foot comes up off the earth. Rotate the inner thigh of the left leg up towards the sky. So toes point down to the earth, squaring the hips. You can always play with it here if you want. Arms can come out to the sides in a T-shape, maybe out in front. That makes it a little more challenging. All right, slowly, slowly step back. Warrior one or high lunge. Again, we're gonna shift our weight forward, come into that right foot, send the left knee in front, stork pose. So we're standing on the right leg. Activate the left foot, send that foot behind you, grab, if you can, the inner arch of the left foot. Knee points right down to the earth. Find your variation here on this side. I can't hear any of you. <laughs> Just realize that. But you can hear me if I go to tumble. All right, let's release here. Send that left knee forward. Step back, high lunge or warrior one. Hands windmill down to the earth. Left knee comes down, right knee follows. This time let's shift our weight forward. Tuck the elbows lower to the earth. So maybe it's baby cobra, sphinx pose or full cobra. Wherever you are, shoulders roll back and down the spine. Tops of the feet push down to the earth. I am forgiving and my compassion replaces anger with love. All right, gently lowering down towards the earth. Let's bend the knees and windshield wiper the feet from side to side. All right, dropping the feet down towards the earth. So we're gonna come into a 
Bo pose. Our dancer was great because it prepared us for Bo. Bo is number 39. So only go as far as you feel comfortable. So in our bow pose, we're going to, let's first come up onto the forearm, like we do in our sphinx pose. And a gentle back bend here. All right, so then we're gonna find two bow poses. I'm gonna give you an option. You can do one side and then the other, or you can just do a full bow at this, uh, uh, for both of them. All right, so our half bow, we're gonna bring the right forearm so it goes the same direction as the short edge of the mat. Bend the left knee, activate the left foot, reach back for that left, either ankle or whatever you feel you can find. If you're in full bow, you're gonna bend both knees and reach back for both feet, activate both feet. All right, perhaps you kick your foot or both feet up towards the sky. Try not to collapse in on that right arm if you're in a half bow. Full bow, heart comes up off the earth. Find your breath. Breathe through it. Practice helps me attain greatness. Gently release your feet, keep your feet active as you do that. Come down to the earth and perhaps wind to wiper the knees or the feet. <laughs> I guess the knees kind of wind to wiper too, don't they? So either half bow on the other side or full bow, once again, we'll come up onto our forearms. Half bow, turn the left forearm. So it's the same direction as the short edge of the mat. Try not to collapse in on the arm. Bending the right leg, activate the right foot, reach back. Maybe you stay here. Or maybe you send that right foot up towards the sky or you're in a full bow. Two more rounds of breath. And then gently release. Once you have come all the way down to the earth, windshield wiper the feet. All right, let's make our way to tabletop and then to seated. Our next pose is a hero pose. So if you have knee issues, we have to be really careful with this one, okay? So I'm actually going to bring us through a half hero. Um, if you have a block or a couple of blocks, feel free to grab them. If not, and you're comfortable with hero, um, you don't need the blocks. I need the blocks, <laughs> but that's my knees. So half hero, what we're going to do is we're going to, we'll start seated and I'll kind of bring you through a little bit here. So kind of like we did before, we're gonna activate the left foot and we're gonna draw that leg behind it. Right leg is out long. If you need to, and it feels like your hips are not comfortable here on the earth, Bring yourself over towards the right side and place a block underneath. Maybe you're able to tuck that foot under. Knee still comes forward. 
So maybe you feel a stretch here in the front of the uh, left thigh. Maybe it's not much of a stretch depending on your body. All right, so from here, let's do this. So either you're sitting up nice and tall, maybe you draw the right leg in. The right foot is on the earth. Notice if there's a difference. If it's in your body, maybe you start to walk your hands back. Find length here in your spine. So some people will depend, right foot can stay on the earth, right leg can come long. If you're not on a back, on a back, on a block, and if you're comfortable doing so, making your way down onto your back. Maybe it's the forearms first. Maybe it's all the way down to the back. Not in my body today. Lots of options where you want to be. Experiment and find where it feels good for you. Ooh, notice if there's any tension coming up anywhere in your body and breathe through it. So no pain in the left knee though. If you need to come out, Draw the right leg long, activate that left foot, roll over to bring the foot out. Let's find two more rounds of breath. If you are on your back, very slowly, come back up onto your forearms. Slowly, slowly walk your hands forward. Wherever you are, right leg extends and then activate the left foot. Bring the hands over to the right side and untuck the leg. Maybe you shake out your legs. All right, another side. Activating the right foot. Maybe you lean over to draw that right foot back. Do you need a block? Finding the block if you need to. Tuck that right foot under if you can, only if it feels good. It may not feel good in the knee. And find a couple of rounds of breath here. Perhaps you draw that right knee in, right, oh, sorry, left knee in, left foot is to the earth. Sitting up nice and tall. All right, find your variation. Maybe you stay tall. Maybe the hands start to come back behind you. You can always extend that left leg again. Maybe you come down onto forearms or onto your back. Practice helps attain greatness. Hey, you know, if there's another pose that feels better for you, 
feel free to come into it. I do see that. If you're on your forearms or on your back, slowly, gently start making your way up to seated. I'll extend the left leg long. Activating the right foot. Hands come to the left to bring that right foot out. Maybe you shake it out. If you're on a block, maybe you remove the block. Number 17, our last one. Let's come down onto our back. It is bridge or wheel. All right, so on the back, feet come uh, to the earth, knees are bent. Feet are hip distance apart. Arms are coming down by your sides. And then whenever you're ready, push your feet into the earth, lift the hips, squeeze the inner thighs, maybe even squeeze the glutes. Perhaps this is as far as you want to go. Maybe you can grab the long edges of your mat and imagine ripping your mat apart, so pull apart. Notice how maybe it helps to lift your hips a little bit more. Keep pushing into the earth with your feet. If you want to, and if it's in your practice, rolling the shoulders under, clasping the hands, send the hands down. Keep squeezing the inner thighs. Two more rounds of breath. And then untucking your shoulders if they're under you or relax, release your mat and slowly coming down. Once your back comes to the earth, maybe give it a second before you move. And then walking the feet mat distance apart, wind to wiper the knees from side to side. I'll tug the knees in towards the chest. Find any movements that feels right for you here. And a twist to end if you are comfortable coming into a twist. So follow me or come into your own variation. Feet are on the earth, knees are bent. Shifting the hips to the right side of your mat, place them down and knees drop to the left. Try and keep the right shoulder down on the earth. And maybe you look over towards the right side, palms face up towards the sky either on the side, T-shape, cactus shape. Sometimes it just depends on the space that you have. And sink and settle here. Notice what's coming up. Try not to push anything away.
And remember, it's just a thought or just a feeling. It does not define you. Whenever you are ready, slowly allowing the knees to come back to center, reposition your back flat on the earth. And then we'll go over to the other side, hips shift to the left and come down, knees drop to the right. Perhaps you look to the left. Softening the shoulders, softening your hips. And maybe as you breathe into whatever is coming up, sensation in your body, something in your mind, can you breathe through it with love? Love for yourself. Love for who you are. And compassion for yourself. The same way you would give compassion to someone else that you care about unconditionally. You decide when this side feels complete for you. And when it does, knees come back to center, reposition your back flat on the earth. And then finding Shavasana or any other position on the earth that will help you relax and settle, let go. Use as many props as you feel you would like. And our last mantra, I open my heart to love. I open my heart to love.
Allowing your body to soften, to release. Letting go of any tension, especially in the forehead, the jaw, the shoulders, and the hips. Gently bringing your awareness back. Perhaps finding some small movements in your body. And whenever you're ready, rolling over to one side. And gently making your way up to seated. Once you get there, lowering or closing your eyes.
And taking deep inhales, long, slow exhale. As you inhale, I invite you to inhale peace, love, and self-compassion. And to remember that the two most important things you did during our time here together were show up and breathe. Everything else was just exploration. The light of me sees and honors the light in each and every one of you. That light is a place of peace, love, kindness, and compassion. When you are in that place in you and I am in that place in me, there is no difference and no distance between us. Together, we are the same. We are one. Thank you for joining me. Have a beautiful day. Go with love.